Well, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, but I had a video on my Harley Electric Glide up on my channel. And I've actually decided to take it down. And the reason is because in that video, I feel like I was a little too hard on the bike and some of the things that I was kind of rapping about are really my own fault and not exactly the bikes. However, some of the gripes that I have about it are still valid, but I understand more about the positives now. <laughs> um, I got this bike back in January, this is March, and um, when I first got it, I was riding it around and it felt extremely heavy. It's an 08 Harley Davidson Electric Glide Ultra Classic with fuel injection, six gallon tank, twin cam 96, six speed transmission. 81,000 miles on it when I got it, or maybe 80,000 when I got it. Uh, it's now got about 83,000 miles on it, so I guess I've put about, you know, 3,000 miles on it give or take a few hundred. Um, when I first got it, going to it from the bandit, it felt like a friend of mine said uh, when he wrote it, it felt like he was driving a dump truck. Kind of feels that way. I think that's kind of an accurate statement. It's a heavy bike. It's heavier than I've ever messed with. I think the bike is actually under 800 pounds dry, but with a wet weight, it's like something like 850 or something like that. 800, or let's call it 850 pounds. That's a heavy bike. That's a really heavy bike. And at first, I could not hardly get that thing around. I could go up and down the road, sure. But, you know, any kind of low speed maneuvering, uh, you know, my carport is on a slope. My driveway is on a slope. It's gravel. You know, turning the bike around in places like that, or at my parents' house where there's not really a turnaround, there's just the driveway. You got to turn around, there's the yard. You got to get out in the grass a little bit where there's mud. Things like that were hard to do for me. And honestly, they were hard for me to do for a long time. And that was one of the things I grabbed about in the last video was I had no confidence on the bike. But I will say now that I've, after putting a few thousand miles on the bike, I think I've got it down. And it's funny because it was like the day after I posted that video, uh, everything seemed to kind of click for me with that bike and I now feel like I can ride it just fine and I guess that means I can give you a better review at this point than I was able to before. So I just took it on a uh, trip to Austin, Texas to see uh, the IndyCar races down there at Circuit of the America and um, the bike did well. It was like a 1200 mile ride total because I rode a little bit, you know, around Austin while we were down there. Um, bike did pretty good. The, the, I will say that the range on it is excellent. That's the biggest plus I've seen on the bike so far is that it gets good mileage and it's got a huge fuel tank, which means it, it can just go for really long ways. I actually ran the tank out of gas the other day just to see how far it could go. And I think I got 217 or 218 which I think I could go further, but um, I was coming into a lot of headwinds from like Texarkana to Little Rock. Actually more like Sulphur Springs to Little Rock. So I think that kind of hurt it a little bit, but not a lot. <clears throat> anyway, so it's got really good range. Also, as far as good things about the bikes, uh, about the bike, it's very reliable. Honest, obviously, this one's got 80,000 miles on it. I expect to get at least 40,000 out of it before I have any real troubles with it. Um, it's just, uh, you know, Harleys are, you know, say what you will about them, they tend to be pretty reliable engine-wise. Um, you know, they have their hiccups every now and then, but for the most part, they seem to be pretty solid engines. The Batwing fairing on the front of it compared to my Bandit. Uh, I took the Bandit out this morning and it was like 41 degrees outside. I've been riding in the 30s all winter long and I didn't think much of it. I put my gear on, I put my helmet on, I'm layered up, I'm ready to go and I'll head out and it's not that bad. I took the Bandit this morning though, which is a, which I have not been riding as much lately because I got a new bike in the, in the uh, stable. Well, let me tell you what, that Batwing fairing actually does really help a lot in the winter to keep cold air off of you. Uh, taking that Bandit to work this morning in the 40s, which I thought was going to be a cakewalk, even when I was layered up, 
I still got fairly cold just in the 12 miles it took me to get to work. And a lot of it was coming through my helmet there around the chin. I've got an Icon Alliance dark helmet. There it is, back there, see it? Uh, and air was just rushing up through the chin. Now a chin skirt or, or something would, would fix that. But on the Harley, you don't even need that. On the Harley, the Batwing is up there. You've got a lot of protection. Now the lower fairings, I don't know that the lower fairings do much, but then again, maybe I'd feel differently if they were suddenly gone. But as of right now, I don't know that the lower fairings really do much. Uh, on the trip to Austin, I tried opening up the vents down there and that didn't really do anything different. Um, or I couldn't tell any different anyway. But uh, the Batwing fairing and all that and the, the storage on the back of it is, is really great. It's really handy. I mean, I used my, on this trip, I used the top case. It was absolutely full. I even stuffed an old jacket into the side case just because I didn't really need to. I just did. I could pack extra fuel. I packed sunscreen and extra visor. Yeah, so I used a lot of the storage. It all worked out really well. I was able to carry all kinds of uh, neat stuff with me. I think that's one of the things that makes it a, probably a really good touring bike. You know, on the Bandit, it was a good touring bike. I still stand by that. But I had to add a lot of bags. I had to buy a tank bag. With the uh, Harley, you just put stuff on there and go. And... It's just kind of a, just kind of one last thing to worry about is storage on your bike. I still say, even after getting better on the bike and getting to where I can do U-turns in the road when I need to, which I've done numerous times now, and even for spirited driving, I still th say that it's a heavy bike and it's never going to be the bandit and you have to kind of come to terms with that when you buy it now, i never thought it was going to be the bandit but you know you have to uh you have to keep your expectations in check when you go into this bike you also have to understand that if you've never ridden one before there's a pretty good learning curve to it you know you're going to feel awkward you're going to feel weird on it for quite a while until you get used to it. Once you get used to it, you'll start to see the benefits of the bike, which is the storage and the crew control, the batwing fairing and all that. So let's talk about the trip and how that went. Started out here in Arkansas. Went down through Texarkana, stopped at a place called New Boston to get gas. I think that was the first fill up I had to do. Went to my buddy's place in Austin. Then we went to a place called Cooper's Barbecue. Best barbecue in Austin, in my opinion. I've been to I've been to a few of the places down there. We went to Cooper's and we also went to Black's also. I think Cooper's is way better. Went to the IndyCar race. They were doing other races too. They also did uh, Super Stadium Trucks. I think I'm saying that right. I always just want to call it Super Trucks or Stadium Trucks, but I think it's Super Stadium Trucks. <laughs> Took the bike home, 
I took the long way home uh, through the hill country in Texas. Stopped at a place called Heiko. Stopped and took some pictures. Overall, you know, as of right now, I think the bike kind of proved itself as a touring bike. And when I take the trip in May, the big trip, or I deleted the old video so you don't know about it, but I'm going to take a big trip in May, or at the end of May, we're going to go to Colorado and New Mexico again. And I'm going to take the Harley this time. And after this weekend's trip, I feel more confident and comfortable taking the Harley on this trip. And honestly, it's probably a better bike to take than the Bandit. I do think the Bandit accelerates better, brakes better, handles better, and probably even rides better, surprisingly. But where the Harley Tramps it is, storage, creature comforts like cruise control, um, and just overall fuel range. Uh, it's also just a bigger bike with a more comfortable seating position. Um, it's got more presence on the road. Uh, I found a lot of positions that you could sit in on the bike to help yourself out from getting sore. You got highway pegs, but you can also put your feet on the uh, passenger floorboards. And you can also stand up on the passenger floorboards uh, to get your butt off the seat for a little bit if you want to, which I thought was great. That's always the number one thing I like to do on a touring bike is just stand up for a little bit while riding. You can do that. You can also just sit normal. There's lots of positions you can sit in. Hell, I was almost sitting sideways on the bike, you know, kind of like, like this or something, just to kind of get weight off of one side, you know. That even went pretty well. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, pictures and video here. Overall, it's a good bike. It's a better bike if you really like Harleys and if you really like that kind of a style bike, then I'd say go for it. For me, I'm not crazy about the Harley styling, but I can appreciate a good bike when I ride one. It's a good bike. There's nothing to gripe about on that thing. <clears throat> it's a little weird. Harleys, I think, are still a little weird. I still think they do some things sometimes that are just weird, just be weird. But whatever is what they want to do. So yeah, now if riding this bike has made me want to uh, try out a Goldwing, just see how they, just see how they do, see how they compare. Um, I've been looking at the Yamaha Venture, the new Venture, and really I think it's got 75 horsepower. That's actually quite ridiculous, though. My Twin Cam 96 has 66 horsepower. And it's an 11 year old bike and actually if you go look the old young uh, the old royal star venture with the v4 from the v-max and it had like 98 horsepower so it kind of went backwards so the venture's kind of weird i think if i was going to get one of the new ones i'd uh probably go with the gold wing you know, more power you know smaller lighter bike probably more fun to ride doesn't have the Harley image. Now that's the key thing. There again, if you're into the Harley image, you gotta buy the Harley. That's what you gotta get. You probably won't be satisfied with the Yamaha Venture. You're probably gonna want that Harley, or maybe an Indian. The Goldwing's probably not gonna do it for you. But for someone like me, who could take or leave the Harley style, Goldwing's probably a good bike for me. The only problem is, I don't have $24,000 or however much they are to buy one. Although I've noticed that uh, Honda's, uh, or the dealerships, are actually discounting those things a lot. Look at this cat. Look at this cat, want some of my treat. Um, they're actually they're actually discounting those gold wings a lot. I've seen $24,000 uh, F6Bs go for marked down to like 19. That's, that's doable, that's actually within my range if I really wanted to do it. But there's really no need to because for right now I've got this electric line. So for right now, I'm just gonna keep riding it. Keep buying more gear. By the way, I'm gonna do a video here before long with like tips for touring and long range riding, little things I've learned over the few trips that I've taken. So we're gonna do some gear reviews and stuff. But yeah, we're gonna keep the bike. We're gonna take it on a trip in May. And uh, then my wife's wanting to take a vacation in it. 
uh, later on this year. So we're probably going to take it down to the Gulf, something like that. It'd be nice. Anyway, y'all have a good one. I hope this has helped you and been informative. We'll see you later. Uh, I've got the uh, electric glide all ready to go. I'm taking a trip today to Austin. We're going to go to an Indy car race at Circuit of the America. Uh, Circuit of the Americas. Shit. I got the uh, electric light all loaded up. Taking a trip today. We're going to uh, Austin, Texas. <laughs>